Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. And 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. 1 John chapter, 6, chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he had laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. This morning, it is a blessing to be able to be here. I extend my thanks to Pastor Andrew for allowing me to be able to fill the pulpit in his absence, and I give glory to God for the opportunity of which I am humbled to share his word. But before I do that, I would like to ask you one more time to join me in a word of prayer. Precious and gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly bow before you today knowing that in our lives many times we begin to forget our relationship with you. As we come before you tonight, we come before you as our Father. And Father God, we ask that you would forgive us where we have failed and where we have sinned against you by either thought, word, or deed against thy holy and divine majesty. For Father God, we want nothing to be between you and I and all of us here today so that we can be freely taught by you and that we might be able to receive your word and your encouragement. And Father God, as we come before you, we know that there are some out there today that are hurting. Some that may be sick or have loved ones that are sick. And we just ask that your healing hand and your touching would be upon them. Father God, for you are the healer. And Father God, we ask for restoration that you would heal the whole body, mind, soul, and spirit. And Father God, we pray for those today that might be wondering whether or not they can have a job that will provide for not only themselves, but in many cases, some here today are providing for families and countries elsewhere. Take their burden today. And provide them with peace in their hearts. To know that you will never leave them and you will never forsake them. And not to grow weary. Father God, we ask you to be with Pastor Andrew and his family. As he went to Hawaii to preside over the wedding of his son Boyd and Miss Gina Kim, and now they are united together. The two families, the Kim family and the Rada family, joined together through the marriage of Boyd and Gina. Father God, I'd ask now that I might decrease and that you might increase. And that you would attune our hearts, our minds, and soul, and spirit to thine own. And that the words that would pass from my lips would be pleasing in thy sight. For, O oh Lord, you are our rock, you are our strength, and you are our redeemer. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a, a round of applause. Amen.
Psalms 122, 1 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord, amen? Are you glad? Well, then I'd like for you to turn to someone that's next to you or around and say, I'm glad you came. Would you do that? Over the last few weeks, Pastor Andrew has been sharing a number of messages on God's love. We've looked at what God's love is, that God's love never fails, God's love never ends. God's love looks for a way into people's lives because God desires a relationship with his people. We've seen God's love demonstrated in that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe it in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And we've seen God's love in action through the life of Jesus who looked into people's lives and looked with compassion and caring Because he came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We were able to see God's love and action through Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. And we we're able to learn that through God's love and through God's action, there was a response that we could make. We could either reject God's love, and maybe there are some here today that have yet to receive God's love. Or you could have accepted God's love. You could have confessed with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believed in your heart that he died and that he rose again and you were saved. And if you made that commitment to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then there was an additional response that was looked at for Christians. They come from the greatest commandments which we looked at in Mark chapter 12, 28 through 34. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. And the second one, like that, to love thy neighbor as thyself. And if you were here last week, then you learned that as we began looking at our love for our neighbor and how our love should be, it was as it is in John 13, 34, that we are to love others as God has loved us. And we learned that our neighbor could be just about anyone. It could be a stranger. It could be a friend. It even could be a brother or a sister. You see, when families grow up, I, I have two sisters and one brother, and now we're all married, but I have four children, and three of those children are married and one's still at home. But as they grow up, they depart and they marry and they have children of their own and sometimes they come back and live near us. And they go from not only being brother and sister, but our neighbors as well. So you see, when we say we should love others, we should love God and we should love others. It extends to the realm of impossibility. But through God, it allows us to be able to extend our love, not only as we would with brotherly and sisterly love, but to allow our love to continue so that it stretches out. As it says in Hebrews 13.1 in our scripture, let brotherly love continue. We've been spending so much time on 
God's agape love. And today we want to look at brotherly love in the sense of when is brotherly love godly love? And I begin as we look at the passage of Scripture that we read today that we're beginning to see that unfold because brotherly love can extend beyond our immediate family because it should extend to others. And we should love them as God loved us. And as we look at 1 John 3, 16, then the question before us from the scripture is that if we are going to love others as God loved us, is it going to be a love that is in action? Or is it simply going to be lip service? The scripture says, my little children, notice it says little children, Reminding of us as Christians who we are, as sons and daughters of God. Let us not love in word where we just simply say, I love you, but it means nothing. But let us love in deed and in truth. The scripture wants us to assure ourselves that when we say we love you, That our love is not lip service. That our love is genuine and true in the same way that God loved us. It must be honest and sincere. As we look at our points that are laid out for us and we look at that first point that says all born again Christian believers are brothers and sisters in the family of God. We're able to see that in the scriptures that you have before us. That by our acceptance of Christ as our Lord and Savior, we were given the power to become the sons of God, as written in John 1.12. And that means, ladies, you are daughters of God. And I find, as I chose to, to speak to the church at Pyeongtaek, that this is a very interesting situation that we have in our relationship with God the Father through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is that as brothers and sisters in Christ, when we marry, for husbands to realize that the woman that you married is God's daughter, and God's not only your father, but God's your father-in-law. And you ought to think carefully about that woman that's God's daughter. And likewise, ladies, your husband is God's son. And God is your father-in-law. I think when we look with godly eyes and we realize our relationship with one another that we are reminded as in Galatians 3.26 that as believers we are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, that there is something that bonds us in a relationship that allows our love for one another as Christians to be as brotherly love and godly love at the same time. And when we come to that understanding and knowledge, we have really grown as Christians. You see, I think all of us can understand the brotherly and sisterly love. The way that we understand, if you have a brother or sister, I have two sisters and one brother. My children have that same relationship. We have two girls and two boys. But as I said, they grow up and sometimes the relationship is distant. You may not have known your brother or sister that intimately or that close because they went off to school or they moved away or they went to a foreign country. But it doesn't make any difference because when you come back together, even though you spent very little time together, there's a genuine chills, there's a genuine excitement because that's your brother or that's your sister. And they're home. 
And when we finally can look with godly eyes and we can look and see that our brother or sister that is a Filipina or uh, someone who is Korean or from Kenya or someone that's from the United States, when we can literally look at them and when we see them again when they come back to church or when we see them on the street and to be able to say, that's my brother, that's my sister. We're united by the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, there's a connection when we are on the same family tree and we're united by the blood of our family tree and Boyd and Gina join two family trees together and they're uniting and, and so the two different bloodlines come together through them and they will have their own bloodline and, but they'll all be connected and the same is true for all of us believers That when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become adopted into the family. Brotherly love is God's love when we love others, especially our fellow believers. Recognizing who they are as our brothers and sisters in Christ. The scripture in Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. When we were talking Friday night and with some of the brothers and sisters here at the church, we began sharing how, you know, as, and I was sharing about myself as a, as a husband and, and, and how so easy it is for us not to think all the time about the work that our spouse is doing, cleaning the house and vacuuming and making sure food is prepared. And maybe I'm, I'm too old-fashioned when I talk about my wife doing that, that some of you wives maybe don't do that anymore. Maybe it's the husband doing that. I'm, I'm not naive, but I do know that that's how I grew up, and that's what's happening in our family. But the thing is, she's making beds. When the grandchildren come over, she's changing diapers. She's playing games. She's bending down. She's doing all sorts of things. And I come home from work, and I, it's almost as if, what have they done all day? But the truth of the matter is, we know if you've ever stayed home, if you've ever participated and done that, there's a world of work that they're doing to make sure that everything looks like nothing's happening. And the truth of the matter is, then there's those special occasions, whether it be Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, or some day where you can go and, and provide them with a gift of candy or flowers to be able to say that I remember how hard it's been for you as a way of showing affection. And sometimes that way of showing affection is such that it allows them not to grow weary. And we can extend that out into our body of believers, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Because there are many that work for the church and do things for the church, but there are a lot more that don't. But sometimes that's not the way it's to be. You, you don't have the time to do or you don't have the calling for that particular ministry. But there's nothing to keep you from that moment of affection to say, I really appreciate what you do on Sunday. I think back to a lady in the church. One time she came and she noticed in those days that there were no pencils in the pews for people to write on. You probably don't see any on your pews either. But this was a different time in a different church and people would write and they had the pencils in the pew. And she would see that some of the pencils were broken, didn't, weren't sharpened. She didn't complain to the pastor that they were broken or not sharpened. Just one time after church, she took all the pencils and sharpened everyone and made sure that they were back for Sunday morning. And she did it year after year after year until she passed away. And once again, the pencils were broken. And people wondered what happened. And then they knew. Sometimes a word of thanks recognizing that something that seems so insignificant 
is an extension of our brotherly love. In 1 Thessalonians, where Paul is writing to the church, that I don't need to write to you. For yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And yet he does. You know, sometimes we use the phrase preaching to the choir. Because we're saying things that you already know, but why do we say them? Because you need to be reminded of how important they are. I think because I grew up in a sporting way involved in sports and some of you watch soccer and some of you watch the different sporting events football american football and those players that play they work so hard during the week and then they they go out and they perform on that major event for that game listen they know what they're supposed to do but they still have coaches that remind them of what they're supposed to do and so it is that when we have compassion for our brothers and sisters in Christ, that we need from time to time to be able to share our love with simply being able to recognize people for what they do, the way in which God recognized who you were and was willing to send his son. Brotherly love is godly love when our love is being compassionate and doing good to other believers. We talked about this the other night. Simply sometimes just saying, I'll pray for you is not enough. When someone finally came to you and said, you know, I, I really could use your prayers for you to say, oh, I'll pray for you. Sometimes that's just not enough. Sometimes really showing the compassion is to say, can I pray for you right now? I mean, why did they come and ask you for prayer? It's because there was a burden on their heart. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. As I alluded to earlier, our God loved us enough that he was able to put into action through the Old Testament, which pointed all the way to the cross. At just the right time that Jesus came and he lived his life so that we could see God manifest in the flesh, that we might know how to live. And to offer himself as the paschal lamb, shedding his blood for the remission of our sins, past, present, and future. These were the works of God that he followed through. It wasn't incomplete. Jesus knew when he came that he would have to suffer and die. But he endured the cross for the joy of what was before him. Sometimes we may grow weary in our work for the church, in our work, in our relationship for one another, but the fact of the matter is there is much more in store ahead of us. That we're here for such a short time. Brotherly love is God's love when it's forgiving and forbearing to other believers. Matthew 18, 21 says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive them? Till seven times? And Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. We look at this scripture. I think one of the most difficult things is to forgive, isn't it? Someone hurts us. It's that built-in part of us that if you hurt my feelings, if you do something to me, I'm not going to forgive you. 
But if we hold on to that unforgiveness, the only one that truly suffers from that unforgiveness is who? It's you. Because the person that you're not forgiving is not affected by it. They're going on doing exactly the same thing. They may not even be aware of what it is that they've done to offend you or what it is that you feel needs to be forgiven. But certainly by the basis of your attitude not to forgive, they see a different person entirely than what they saw before you had nothing between you. I shared a story because this was one of the biggest issues that I needed to be able to face. You see, pastors are not perfect. And sometimes it's important, certainly when you're listening to a pastor for the first time that you haven't really had an opportunity to hear, to, to know where this pastor is coming from. Why is it that he understands or is preaching something about brotherly love and godly love and understands that when you have a godly love, it can change things in a way that you can't imagine? You see, I share that I have three fathers. I have my earthly father, the father who with my mother allowed me to become their son through their union together. And then when my father passed away, my mother remarried a year later after he died and he became my second father. But in that act, I was angry with my mother. I couldn't forgive her for marrying someone else. And I couldn't love my second father. But my children love their grandmother. And they love the new grandpa. And the new grandpa would lift my children up and even though he hurt because of his arthritis and the other things that were ailing him and I would learn sometime later that after we would leave from visiting he would be in such pain from having lifting it up my little boys and playing with them. But there was that one night when I could see the love of my children for their grandmother and for their grandfather that I got down on my knees and I prayed and I said help me to love my, grand, or my second father and help me to forgive my mother because my children love and I want to be able to love like that and almost overnight my heart was changed because he became a father to me and he was a pastor and he became the mentor to me that allowed me to understand that even in spite of the life that I had lived, I too could still aspire to be the pastor when I thought myself not worthy. And it brought me an affection for my mother that I was able to learn even further through scripture how what she did was not anything and that meant that she didn't love my father. And those are other sermons. But I want you to know that what that is, is that when you finally come to realize that with the love of God, that these people that you run into, whether or not they were originally family or not, they are now your brothers and sisters in Christ. And we need to be able to forgive them when they offend us. We need to be able to continuously give them our love. In Colossians 3.13 it says, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against anyone, even as Christ forgave you, also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Finally, our last point this morning. Brotherly love is encouraging other believers until the Lord Jesus Christ returns. 
I think this is important to recognize that love's not a one-time thing. You see, we've used the word love in society so much that it's not surprising that we've lost the true meaning of love. People use love as an adjective to say, I love that car you're driving. I love that dress you have on. I love that pair of shoes. I just love that movie I saw last night. We throw that word around so much that it's not surprising that Satan is so easily able to confuse so many people on what true love is. And that's why we've taken the time to spend time on God's love and to look at brotherly love and how it is family, and how as Christians we are family. And we are united by the blood of Jesus. And the third love that's spoken of in the Bible, brotherly love, philos, godly love, agape, and the love, eros, which is the emotional, the affectionate, the feeling, and Satan would love to get you to believe that that love stands alone when it's not. Those loves are an aspect of the first love, the love that originated with the Father, God's love. Hebrews 10, 24 says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another as so much the more as ye see the day approaching. I look at this particular passage of Scripture as it relates to encouraging believers is to remind us as brothers and sisters in Christ that we aren't perfect. In our own family, our brothers and sisters are going to hurt us from time to time. There's going to be differences that exist. There's going to be someone that says, you, you didn't really love me, you didn't care about me, you didn't come visit me last Thanksgiving or Chusuk or Christmas or some occasion, or you weren't there when my child was born. Words that often hurt. And yet, it's in those times when we, if we're looking at our brothers and sisters with godly eyes, Looking, we can recognize when people are down and hurting. And Christians can be the worst when someone is suffering. Maybe even when someone's committed a sin. I mean, after all, once we've confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord, we're all living a perfect life, are we not? No, I don't think so. I know I haven't. But sometimes in the church, we all think our sin is not as bad as someone else's sin. Oh, we saw them with so-and-so last night. We saw them out having a drink. We saw them doing this, and we saw them doing that. Maybe that's the time where the Scripture tells us we need to surround and we need to find out why it is that they were looking somewhere else when they have brothers and sisters in Christ, and this is where we're the strongest. You know, Satan would like to tell you that, well, remember... Jesus was with the sinners. He was with the tax collectors. Yes, he was. Don't be afraid of those comments. Yes, he was. And he was trying to lead them to Christ. But he wasn't doing it to hang out with them. And sometimes Satan will get you convinced that you're doing all these things that you shouldn't be doing because you're trying to bring that brother or sister to Christ. And the truth of the matter is, we should be edifying one another. Because as you do, you also do unto God. You remember... Some people wondered when they fed him, when they clothed him, when they comforted him. And the answer was, when you did it to the least of my brethren, you did also to me. I think when we look with godly eyes, when we look at God's love, it says we love with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. 
Yes, it's difficult. And that's when we have to rely on the other scriptures. Like we sang. That I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. That's why we get into the word. That's why we study the word. So that we might be able to be encouraged in our times when we're distraught. That we can be an encouragement and a Barnabas to others. Brotherly love is godly love. When we love our brothers and sisters in the same way that we should be loving God. And as God loved us. That we're willing to, to make the sacrifice. That we're willing to look for a way in. That we're willing to show compassion. That we're willing to go the extra mile. If we can do those things and recognize that everyone sitting in these pews that knows Jesus Christ as their personal Savior is my brother and sister. And I look at them differently now through God's eyes. I want to know how they're doing. And I want to be happy when I see them again. And I want to miss them when they're gone. Then I believe you will know that brotherly love, sisterly love, is godly love. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you for those that are here present today. I pray that every heart and mind was open and that in spite of myself that your word spoke to them. Allowing them to, to understand godly love and brotherly love. And when they mesh together, how it perfects relationships and strengthens lives. And builds upon the future. When we will be united together with Christ in heaven. I ask your blessings and your anointing upon all that are here. May we gain strength from your word. And I ask all these things in Jesus name. Amen.